we've been called out now on a Saturday afternoon. It's 38 degrees. And uh, there's two cheetahs that have escaped from one reserve onto another. So we've got to get them back because there are lions on this side and the other cheetahs that are going to beat them up. So we can't wait for it to cool down. It's not going to cool down much anyway. Not ideal conditions working in these in this heat, but we don't have any choice. This little pangolin's name is Aura. The reason she's called Aura is because she came in on a very, very windy night and she was confiscated in a sting. I'm Peter Rogers. I'm a wildlife vet working largely in the Greater Kruger Park. And this video is really about raising awareness of the plight of the pangolin. We have now been appointed at ProVet as the, you can call it the sanctuary or the rehabilitation first aid emergency treatment hospital for all the pangolins in this area. So we see them first, usually in very, very poor condition, you know, dehydrated, stressed as anything. And it's up to us to get them back to where they're actually in a fit state to be released again. been called out to a lion on a reserve nearby to Hootsprate that uh, his signal has been in the same place for the last few days. So suspecting something was wrong, they went in on horseback today and they found him lying there and he seems to be uh, in a poor way at the moment. He's uh, just lying flat and the younger males are actually harassing him so they've called us out to come in to immobilize him and to see you know if we can find out what's wrong with him. So. We went in to have a look just to do like a bit of a recce and you can see that he's 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 not well eh? he's, he's like sort of no energy in it so we're going to dart him and um, we're going to use metatomidine and ketamine because that's going to be the safest to use at this stage you see it's been kicked like this eh? right into there you can see that eh? that big indentation i think it's something like a giraffe eh? what's probably happened here is that this broken rib has penetrated the lungs so now you've got <clears throat> air that's come in through the lungs into the, the chest cavity on the one side so he's probably got a collapsed lung on this side so he's basically only breathing uh, with one lung you can see how he's sort of heaving I'm gonna roll him over just to check there's nothing on the other one, side two, three. we'll be off to a boma because we can't leave him out in the wild he's gonna die uh, he won't be able to hunt for himself you can see he's very dehydrated so he's on a drip and we're on our way now we're following the, the white vehicle and we'll uh, just fill him up with fluids and painkillers and antibiotics. Today is the follow-up treatment on the same rhino that we treated last week. He seems to be a bit better, but he was seen on the ground and we're gonna just take him off to go and see if we can find him. Cleaning the wound with peroxide uh, it's very, very deep. At this stage, I realized that the wound was actually right between the ribs, so it was right into the chest. Uh, so that caused that left lung to collapse. As you can see, my hand's going right in there, far, far, far. So the wound has been cleaned out with iodine. I'm now packing it with cotton wool, firstly to try and seal the hole, and also to stop uh, blowflies getting in. just cleaning it out uh, you can see that it's actually healed up very nicely it's well it's, it's busy healing up very nicely and there's certainly some progress from the last time so he's starting to sweat a little bit those are the sort of warning signs you can see he's trembling again the anesthetic is very light because I don't want it too dark that he too heavy that it actually blood goes dark and that he can actually die under the anesthetic so keeping very very light uh, quickening up the procedure, not going too long, so we can wake him up. And it was looking good. There was, you know, from the from the first time we treated him, 
say three weeks ago to now there's been no more maggots and certainly the wound appears to be healing up nicely so yeah who knows you know these animals have got a great uh, resilience and resistance uh, they heal much better than humans they've got a certainly got a massive will to live and an inherent resistance to, to these sort of wounds But the most important disease uh, possibly on the farm that she's going to, the, the reserve she's going to, is rabies. So we're going to just give her a rabies boost as well. And then we're going to put into the crate and then we're going to wake up. The antidotes, the atipamazole, the yohimbine and the naltrexone. 